Inside this room, all of my dreams become realities, and some of my realities become dreams. What in the wide, wide world of sports is going on here? Alive, it's alive, it's alive! You are listening to The Wilder Ride, getting wilder by the minute. Here are your hosts, Alan Sanders and Walt Murray. Welcome back to The Wilder Ride, where we are getting wilder by the minute, a podcast where we break down and celebrate the films of Gene Wilder one minute at a time. Our very first film we are looking at is Young Frankenstein. I'm your host, Alan Sanders. And I'm your co-host, Walt Murray. To cap out the week, someone who's been with us all week long, uh, just adding flowers and a fresh coat of paint to what is uh, otherwise a very disgusting laboratory, <laughs> Susan Delmonico. A woman's perspective. <laughs> yes, a woman's, a woman's touch. A badly needed woman's perspective. <laughs> yes. So when we last left the doctor, he was getting on board the train and his fiancée, Elizabeth, was doing everything she could to show very little affection to him, eventually becoming enshrouded by a cloud of smoke. So we begin... This minute, starting off with that same cloud of smoke and hearing a slowly choking and gagging Elizabeth. And we end with a rather interesting pun about a track and a station and a boy. (laughs) (laughs) You have a lot to look forward to in this minute, folks. And it's amazing how we get there in just 60 seconds. 60 seconds. 60 crazy seconds. All right, so let's start off at the very beginning here. We've established yesterday that Elizabeth is a very shallow, very vapid woman who seems to be in it for maybe the the stature of being with a doctor, the money, the fame, the whatever, but uh, is not showing a whole lot of affection. And we we leave her in a cloud of billowing, black, cloying, (laughs) choking smoke. Goodbye, Elizabeth. For now. We won't see her again for a while. Her, her specter hangs over like a dark cloud for a while, but yes, no, we will not see her for a little while. Which is so weird because, you know, Madeline Kahn, I just love. I, she's just such a wonderful actress, but man, you hate her character. <laughs> yeah, I almost am happy that she's left, like, basically, cloy, you know, just <coughs> you know, choking. I mean, it, it doesn't sound like a lady who'd be like, <clears throat> I mean, she's like, <laughs> <laughs> so out of character like of her prim and proper well, yeah, yes. exactly. I mean, her, oh it is I, if it you is. go back and listen like her choice of words the way she except for the delivery she knows how to sound sultry almost she's got that sort of breathy oh darling you know but then she's like you bet your boots it does. i mean she doesn't have a lot of education it sounds like i think she's smarter than she lets on because she has to be smart in order to manipulate well, people like the way she does street yeah. smart versus dr frankenstein, frankenstein oh obviously she doesn't smart. have that type of intelligence but she's not a stupid person no she's not dumb right she's yeah, not she, ditzy she knows how to play the game yes Next we see very quickly is we are on board the train and now we know where we're headed because we hear the conductor say that we are, or we're going to say here in this minute that we're heading to New York. But before that, we've got a very interesting scene here with two random people behind him, a husband and wife who are having a a bit of an argument. Yeah, just kind of a usual husband and wife kind of bickering back and forth. Uh, You don't get the sense that's their first time uh, with that rodeo. And Dr. Frankenstein sits there completely oblivious to it, reading a a very interesting magazine, which is The Lancet. That's a a medical peer-reviewed journal. So he, he, again, we're going back to this very serious medical professional with this (laughs) bickering couple (laughs) behind him. Now, what is interesting about this conversation at least this first part you have to ask yourself what are they talking about because it starts off with her saying to the to her husband i guess we can assume husband hey he's doing it again and he says well what am i supposed to do about it and she goes every day (laughs) and then he says well just leave him now (laughs) how do we bring this up what is he doing (laughs) again every day that the husband is just just leave him well, Is this there's... a foreshadow to Igor talking about his dad's advice? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. For her sake, I really hope not. <laughs> I mean, they're talking about what sounds like a younger male who seems to be doing something every day, and the mom wants the <laughs> husband to do something about it. And the husband's only answer is, just let him. Is he playing one rub one off in the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if I want to speculate. Is on he that locking one? the door to his bedroom and not coming to answer? <laughs> Maybe it's Igor's parents. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
that would be a typical thing. I think a mom is like worried about why is our son locking himself in his bedroom for hours on end? Well, they seem like an older couple. So well, yeah, that's, that's typical for that time. They would yeah, cast, maybe. they always cast actors. That, look at Jaws. I mean, the Kittner parents. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he's like nine years old, the Kittner boy, and these people look like they're his grandparents. Yeah, she does so, look like his I think Hollywood at one point in time, they didn't cast, they cast older, older to really establish their parents. Yeah. <laughs> they're way older. I mean, look at Leave it to Beaver. I mean, they looked older than the kids. They did. Older, especially Ward. Yeah, Ward was a stuffy old guy. You have nothing to say. <laughs> nothing. Because I'm still shocked that that's the direction you took. I, I never <laughs> even once. I, yeah, I, I really had not thought my that mind, much. So I'm just still, wow. <laughs> that, what else would they for be your mother? arguing about? What, what? Okay, fine. Well, let, let's play this out. Because it's the end of the week. I'm thinking the weekend. <laughs> What's What else would a mom... Be complaining to her husband about that he's doing it again. I thought we had the we, paper boy I thought we is broke throwing the, the paper in the bushes again every, every day. day. And he says, "Let him, let him," because it's not so, worth it to. I don't think it's the paper boy. I th- it's a good try, Walt. Do you want to give it a stab? Anything? Or, or did I hit a nerve and you realize? Oh my God! I now know. See what now, now about. I can't think of anything <laughs> else. Uh, this is this is in my head and I can't get it out. This is. I'm telling you, I, I, I well, you've read the book behind the scenes, the making of this, but. In my mind, this is a conversation I have heard other parents have about their kids locking really? themselves in their room, and they know what they're doing in there, and they don't like them doing it. Wow. Maybe it's, because I only have girls. That that has never been any you conversation. Had blockers, though. Well, good God, I didn't know anything about that. <laughs> I guess you don't think about your brother that way. <laughs> no, no, I'm just. Oh, you're just putting all these horrible thoughts in my head, and I I want to go home now. <laughs> Well, in all honesty, when I was watching this scene, I just kind of thought that they told the two of them look bicker about something. I, I don't I didn't even think about them writing the uh, except when we get to the German train, the German couple is having the exact same word for word argument that the American couple is having. The, the, the woman says and it says exactly this, calls him Hans and says, Hans, he's doing it again. And he's like, well, what am I supposed to do about it? She's like, well, every day. And he's like, well. Just leave him. Leave him. The paper boy just can't get the paper That's, all the way up oh, he on might the porch. Be, there might be something to do with slinging, but it ain't the paper. <laughs> wow, I am just... I, yeah, I'm kind of floored. I had never really <laughs> even paid attention to what the dialogue was there. I just kind of had it as a bickering couple. I think if we go back and realize, and we're going to see that as at the end of this minute, everything they left in this film, there was a reason it was left in the movie. And I don't think they would have just had some random bickering couple unless there was supposed to be some innuendo underneath. Hmm. Yeah, good point. It makes sense. But I now I'm going to look at it totally different next time I watch it. <laughs> look, I can honestly tell you this, since my dad has already passed away, God bless his soul. He would pound on the bathroom door. What are you doing in there? You should be done by now. I'm like, well, but dad, he's like, come on, quick. It doesn't take that long to rub one off. I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, oh, my God. And I hear my mom, Jerry, you can't say that. Okay, so I need to make a note. Do not let my mom listen to minute 15 of our podcast. Avoid minute 15 of the podcast. Mom, we just go from 14 to 16. Don't worry about it. So are you looking up what this could possibly I, I be? Am, I am looking it up. Well, I mean, if you can come up with a better, because again, no, I what think I love you... about if that's the interpretation, it goes to show parents everywhere with young males <laughs> have to deal with the, deal same, the same thing. Problem. Yeah, I'm kind of thankful now I've got daughters. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> me three. <laughs> <laughs> because I know, I know that this is, that's what they're talking about. There's just something is uncomfortable about what the son keeps doing and make a point. It's every day. And it's the mom wants the dad to go, you go talk to your son. He should not be touching himself. <laughs> well, and I guess later on, Igor deals with the same issue. <laughs> I guess Igor's dad, though, is well, how about you let someone else have a turn? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I need to get in there. It's my turn. <laughs> oh, that's so wrong. This movie has taken a very disturbing turn. It's Gene Wilder and Mel Brooks. I know. We should have known going now, if in. We were, if, if we were talking a John Ford Western, I think I was definitely all wet. Yeah, no, I would agree with you. But uh, you know that you're probably right. I've never, I've just never thought about the dialogue of the bickering couple. I've just always kind of written them off and said, oh, it's a bickering couple. And you know, it may work on the surface. It may be one of those things that's sort of like the Muppet Show when we grew up. We knew that the kids laughed because it was silly watching the Muppets, but the parents watched because some of the jokes only worked at the parent level. Very true. Very true. And I, and I think for a lot of us, we take the same tact that Gene Wilder does 
does. You just kind of mind your own business and go about what you're it's doing. Totally oblivious. Let the couple it. argue. Yeah. Now there is this interesting transit. They do a lot of different kind of transition in this movie. They do. Right after, and we see it in the behind the smoking sign up in the background, and then we move to now we're obviously on a German train because we hear the exact same dialogue being uttered by a couple, but only in German, and we know it's the exact same dialogue because a buddy of mine who told me he said yeah he said yeah yeah that's this is exactly what they're saying they're saying, having the exact same argument and then the train conductor comes in and tells them they're in transylvania now i gotta ask a question here does anybody have any idea why you would take a german train if you're in transylvania you're heading to romania uh, well that that was one of my questions i, I said they're speaking german but are they, they're in romania so i didn't understand why they're not exactly next door you gotta right, go through what, right. I think two or three different countries from Germany to head over to get into Romania. Yeah, so I didn't understand that. Unless just because the German accent, I guess, is funny. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was it. Yeah, we need to send a note to our buddy and tell him how funny his accent is. <laughs> well, you know, there there are several interesting cultural curveballs that we get in this movie, and this is one of them. But I think that there is a, a, a sense in which an American audience, we just kind of accept that it's Europe. Yeah. And we don't really think about the geography of Europe or anything else. Like, for most Americans, we're kind of the ugly Americans. Right. We don't pay attention to where Transylvania is versus where Germany is versus where England is. I mean, we know England's an island, but we don't really even do pay we? attention to these. Well, <laughs> those of us in this room do. Well, we, we do. We know. But, of course, um, we also know that Germany is not next door to Romania. Right, we, we do know that, too. And But I, I'd say for most Americans and most of the American audience, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, that's where vampires are from. That's where monsters live. That we just don't really think. And I, I would bet that a lot of people don't even know that Transylvania is a real place. Yeah. So <laughs> there's true. probably just kind of this sense of, eh, it's a guttural language. And, well, yeah, the, it, the, it's the over Eastern there. Eastern European accent. That, that's good enough. Eastern European. And 1970. 74, we're kind of at the height of the Cold War. Mm -hmm. We're just kind of, it's over there. <laughs> it's that place. The other side of they the iron, sound of different the, of the from iron us. curtain. Yeah, they're different. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, let's do this. Let's get a little more insight into this moment. I'm going to I'm going to see if I can't pull in here our official German liaison to the show, our good buddy who lives up in Germany, Malta Derks. See what he has to say. Hey, everyone. Yes, this is Malta Derks, live from Germany, the official German translator and friend of the Wilder Ride, getting wilder by the minute. Here's what's happening in this particular moment. First of all, there is a transition from one train to the next, so the big gag is that, whoops, suddenly time goes by like that, and he sits in a different train, different country. After the transition, what we hear is an elderly couple in the background saying basically this in German. Hans, he's doing it again. Well, what am I supposed to do about it? Well, every day. Ah, oh, just leave him alone. Then the conductor comes in and basically says, Next stop, Transylvania. Everyone get off for Transylvania. However, it's super crappy grammar, beginning with the wrong word, Transylvania. It would be Transylvanian. Obviously, they didn't care. I seem to find lots of the more imperative sentences throughout movies where English natives spoke German from the 40s to the 80s are bugged and flawed as hell. It's almost like in the movies, they tend to think there is normal German and then there's an over-the-top German grammar for evil, loud and shocking lines like Get off to Transylvania! Or who knows, maybe it's just a casting decision and then the actor can't really speak German at all. Anyway, it reminds me of gloriously un-German moments like in Die Hard, where they say Mach los, Mach los, instead of Mach schon, Mach schon. <laughs> Let's look at everything else in this scene. There's a sign for smokers which says Rauchen. It would really be Raucher, addressing the smoking persons rather than the action of smoking. It could have been different in earlier days, but nowadays it just sounds wrong. I suppose they didn't really do a good job there, but it's not that big of a budget, so I guess they don't have the money. Everything else is Germanized too. If you look at the hats, the dresses and the decorations on the walls, it certainly isn't 1974 anymore. And what we see looks more fashionable in the 30s. Mostly for touristic purposes, you can still find similar styles of wall decoration in Bavaria and Austria though. Now, speaking of Austria, since the real Transylvania is actually one or two countries away from Germany, and given that you'd have to cross Austria to get there, this could also be an Austrian train. Who knows? However, generally trains are much more popular in Europe and it does happen that a German train goes that far. Then there's one more intricate detail in this scene. The newspaper. 
he flicks through an English magazine, and then in the next train, he's still reading. But what is he reading? I couldn't see, but it looks very similar to the first paper. So my guess is they didn't change it to a German newspaper the way they Germanized everything else in this scene. But instead, the comedic gag is the doctor sits down in the train, starts reading, and within the switch of a page, time goes by like that, like a time machine, and he arrives in Transylvania as though nothing had ever happened in between. Anyway, that's all I have for this minute. This has been your German counterpart to the Wilder Ride. Back to you, Alan and Walt. Well, well that was insightful. You, there that you go. Was interesting. So he he confirmed that the the couple says exactly on the train in German what the American couple was arguing about back on the way to New so York. German parents have the same problem. Apparently, as American young parents. teens uh, they get excited. They want to go lock the door and hey, be in the room for a little bit. Boys will be boys. Boys, jawohl. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, he also, I think, interesting is he noticed that uh, they have kind of a misspelling on the on the sign on the back of the train. It's supposed to be smoke. If you look at the the spelling, the spelling on the back of the train says uh, it's spelled R A U C H E N, but it's supposed to be an R, not an N, which means this like a smoking area. This is where smokers go. So they kind of got one letter off and have a bit of a like for somebody in modern Germany, they were like, eh, it's not how you would write that sign. It would be spelled with an R on the end versus an N. He did say, if he, which I thought was interesting, the decor of the train reminded him of uh, of trains and and that German type architecture. And, and decorating not a modern looking train right it gives us a sense that as we continue there in these few minutes we keep going further and further back in time to the point where by the time we're in the castle we might as well be back in 1931, we're in 1931. Right. yeah and, and we're gonna see it really in our minds basically from the minute we transition to the train station we're back in time i do find it funny malta says whoever the actor was that learned the german line for the conductor He's like, this is terrible, Jeremy. <laughs> it's terrible. He's like, I know what he's saying, but it sounds horrible. It's bad. <laughs> Only someone who speaks German would know would that know because that, to yeah. us it sounds amazing. Wow, that, yeah, that's us. really yeah, good. Yeah, Transylvania, yeah. next to stop. Like, what is that? that sounds almost like uh, Italian. Italian. Yeah. <laughs> the chef Boyardee of German <laughs> dialogue. Chef Boyardee of German. <laughs> All right, so here we get an interesting moment, and I didn't understand this when I watched it to begin this project. I'd never got it when I was younger and saw this movie. It wasn't until you, Walt, helped explain to me, and after I read the script last night, I think between the two of us, we pieced together this last little bit. And that's what makes me believe there are no wasted lines of silly dialogue. Every bit that's left in this movie. Well, there's some silly dialogue. Every, every, there, there are no wasted lines. Yeah, right. There are no wasted lines. Absolutely. And um, when I watched this, and particularly as, as I was watching this minute by minute, I knew that there was a joke here. But I didn't know what it was. I couldn't figure it out. So I had to go and Google the um, the dialogue to figure out what was going on here. And uh, you're our music man, so uh, well. Here's the lines what we're talking about. And if you're and if you're just now following along with us and want to get to the end of this minute, this end of minute fifteen, they're pulling into the platform. They're pulling into the Transylvania station. He's basically the conductor is saying, "Everybody out! Everybody, this is your this is your stop. This is the Transylvania station." And as they get close they're still rolling to a stop dr frankenstein raises the window and sees a young boy walking the platform with a shoe shine box and he says to the boy he says pardon me boy is this the transylvania station to which the boy says yeah yeah truck 29 now why am i listening to this what's the point the, the conductor already said we're pulling into transylvania we heard him say transylvania we can assume and then it occurred to me as i'm reading the script this is an exact four line word for word just about takeoff of the old Andrew sisters Glenn Miller Chattanooga Choo Choo. Pardon me boy, is this the Chattanooga Choo Choo? And the the following lines are track 29, boy you can give me a shine. Yeah. And that is just so funny that they would put that in there and um I maybe people in the 70s who watched it for the first time maybe adults would have caught that. But again, I, I, I never would have gotten it. I didn't sense that there was a joke there like you did, but I found it random and awkward, those lines. Because why would you waste a line? Why would why would he say those things? It didn't make any sense. Who cares what track it is? <laughs> right. Yeah, so it has no bearing on the It was just so random, and I, I just found it weird. And, it, and it's obvious it's the song. It, it, there's no doubt about no it. Doubt. No, no doubt. No doubt. Yeah. Because even the first line, that Gene Wilder says matches syllable to syllable. If you count out, pardon me, boy, is this the Transylvania station? Pardon me, boy, is this the Chattanooga Choo Choo? Exact same syllable, yep. same count. You could sing it and it would fit the same meter of the song. 
And then the kid goes back, yeah, yeah, track 29. Same first three exactly. lines of the song are right there. We don't hear the rest because the kid turns around and realizes, oh, can-? and that's all we hear is, oh, can-. but spoiler alert for Monday, oh, can I give you a shine? Exact four first lines of the Glenn Miller song, sung and made popular by the Andrews sisters way back. I don't even know when it came out. I have to look, I could have looked that up, I guess, beforehand, but I know, yes, there's no I know it's World War II. But again, the, the, the lyrics from the Chattanooga Choo Choo. Pardon me, boy, is that the Chattanooga Choo Choo, track 29. Boy, you can give me a shine. So, Walt, when you were, look, you said you Googled this and looked it up, is uh, Gene Wilder and Mel Brooks, were they a fan of the Andrews sisters? Was that, why, why was it put in there? Because it's a very, even though there is a joke and they do refer to that, why was it? What was the importance of that? I don't know, and I have not seen anything that indicates why that was put in. And I, even in the book, they don't discuss this line that I can remember. I mean, I need to go back and look. But it's kind of a standalone joke from all I can see. That's why I'm wondering, were one of them a fan? Was that a joke on set? Did someone play that? Or I guess the script would have been written, so it would have had to have been before that. It just seems like something would should have had to have been there to cause that to be put into the script. Right. And I, I, I would guess that, you know, my parents growing up in the in the 40s and 50s would have probably would have known that song. That would have been something in, uh, that they would have been familiar with. And they would have been folks who would have gone and seen that movie originally. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kind of stumped by it. I, I would. My guess is going to be that it's something it's a personal thing having to do with either Mel Brooks or Gene Wilder. Yes. It could be, but I do know, and maybe it's because everybody's got different paths growing up. My grandfather used to be part of a big band. He had his own, he had a small version of a big band, like a 15 piece. So my dad grew up with that and hearing those songs and that music. So I grew up hearing my dad play Glenn Miller Orchestra albums. And I remember my mom and dad singing songs about the Chattanooga Choo Choo, as well as hearing the da 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 So I heard all these songs I'm wondering if, if you're right, because we have to think this is 44 years ago this movie came out. So parents, when our parents were 44 years ago, that song wasn't that far removed because the Andrews sisters, that was 41. I just looked it up. Glenn Miller released that song 1941, the Chattanooga Choo Choo. So 41, 51, 61, 71. It's only 33 years later since the start of World War II that this movie came out. So a lot of the parents that would have gone to see this movie probably heard the song on either an oldie station. I mean, don't forget, we're here even in, in, in Atlanta, we're out of, out, of, out of Georgia. When I first moved here, one of the most popular stations my mom and dad listened to was when Fox 97 was mm-hmm. the oldie station and they played songs of the 40s, 50s, and 60s. My mom and dad loved it and they would have songs like this being played so I think it would have been in the public consciousness still. I, I just think we're so far removed from it today, it didn't resonate as much for us. And I know um, when I was a kid, we used to drive through Chattanooga on the way to my grandparents' house. And I remember my dad throwing out a one-liner where he'd say, pardon me, boys, it's the Chattanooga Choo Choo. <laughs> Every time we went through Chattanooga. <laughs> Every single time that's we dad, went through that's Chattanooga. Dad humor. It's a dad joke. Yeah, and my <laughs> kids joke about that now with me. They're like, oh, that's a dad text. <laughs> So, <laughs> so I guess <laughs> when my kids text. have a podcast 30 years from now, they'll be like, my dad used to tell this joke every single time. Oh, uh, get it now. Yeah, so <laughs> it would have that song would have been a part of the cultural consciousness, I guess. But it, it missed me. It, it totally it, missed me. It totally missed me until I look again. And it's something about reading the script last night. When I got my hands on it, I was going through to find scenes that were dropped and which ones are exactly as written. And it's amazing how many are just verbatim to the script because you keep hearing about on comedies how much you improvise and change it's amazing the scenes they kept it's like they nailed it it's like they they said no we've ironed out the joke in the script you can't deviate otherwise the joke might fail and this is one where you couldn't improvise you have to stay with the meter absolutely song well and they very purposely this wasn't just an improvise because I mean, they had a shoe shine kid standing right. on the, uh, <laughs> walking, at the train station. At what what hour of night is this? Because in a minute here, this, when we, Monday, when we get here and find out he's off the tracks and he's waiting for his ride, it's dark and spooky. <laughs> yeah, no, this kid had the like midnight to eight a.m. shift <laughs> at, at the uh, shoe shine stand at the train station. Um, isn't that when we send most nine-year-olds out oh, to oh, work? Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> well, we are now in Eastern Europe, so who knows? You know, they're strange over there. Yeah, let's not judge another culture. <laughs> Although apparently they all still have boys locking themselves in their bedroom. Hey, there's some things. <laughs> Every that are just, day? Yeah. yeah. They yeah. are what they are. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Every day. 
Well, that's going to, I think, wrap up this minute. Unless there's anything else that we missed. Walt, anything uh, besides wrapping up with a Glenn Miller tie-in to Chattanooga Choo Choo? No, I, I think like all the other minutes so far, we keep finding more layers of, of uh, interesting stuff. And it shows how deep Gene Wilder and uh, the writers of this movie are. And you just get more and more layers to the onion as we go. <laughs> what about you, Susan? Joining us here for the for their final episode this week. I'm just still scarred from the whole conversation between the couple. I, I, I'm scarred. Thank you for ruining that for me. You're welcome. Well, now, now that you know how much you hurt your clients, now we've done the same to you. <laughs> you did. Yeah. We're well, here. let's give you a chance as we wrap up, because if people want to learn a little bit more about what you do, someone who might be more local, because <laughs> I'm sure people from all around the world are going to look for a personal trainer here in Georgia. Tell us a little bit where people can learn a little bit more about what you do. Well, even if you're not local, you can go to my website, sjdhealthandfitness.com, and I have tips and recipes and blog ideas. You can check me out there. I'd love to check you out there. I have to be in my room and my mom's going to come back. You, in you seriously <laughs> only have one thing on your mind, don't you? Everything is a certain way for you, apparently. <laughs> Every day? <laughs> is that even humanly possible? Yes. yes. I've, I've, got, I've got bad news for you. Your it's poor just, mother. Yes. It is humanly it's possible. It's just boys. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being with us. Seriously, I I know it was emotionally scarring, but hopefully, you know, there's a you know, maybe get one of your clients to give you some therapy as trade out some of your sessions. I think so. I think so. But thank you anyway for having me. I did have a good time. Since this is our last Thanks, time Susan. with you, um, tell us about just in general. You're not going to be able to comment on much of the the rest of the film, but from your perspective as one of our guests, where does this rank in terms of just comedies or Gene Wilder fandom? Where where does this fall for you? It, it's just a hilarious movie. I love that. I love silly comedy, and which it is silly, but there is a little bit more highbrow humor that the average person isn't going to get. And I love that where you can sit there and realize, oh, I get it. That's funny. I get why that's funny. But it does give you enough offering of the slapstick, the visual, well, the, there, even the auditory humor. So, I mean, it does hit a lot of different layers. Yeah. You know, like the, you know, oh, doo-doo music. And <laughs> the oh, doo-doo music. <laughs> but, I mean, there is the slapstick, stabbing your leg with a scalpel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and then we're going to be introduced to even more interesting characters as we continue to make our way through this. In fact, you're going to have to come back Monday to find out what happens once we get off this train and does anybody actually meet the good doctor to take him to his inheritance? But you're going to have to wait till Monday to find out. Walt, if somebody wants to learn a little bit more about us and this wilder ride that we're on, where can they go? If people are still interested in learning more about us, <laughs> they, they can find us on Facebook, on our listener site, or on our regular site uh, of the wilder ride. Or you can go to, uh, <laughs> to one of the many places <laughs> online. Uh, <laughs> Think, think. <laughs> I'm just thinking that unlock the bedroom door. There are going to be psychiatrists listening to this door. this uh, episode for a long time and <laughs> scratching their head. But yes, you can find us on uh, iTunes.com, where we would love for you to go by and give us a five star rating and make a quick comment about the show and what you're enjoying about it. And um, and then again, you can uh, find us on Twitter. You can find us on any place on the internet where um, people like us can be found. All right, and if you want to play with us. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Can I go now? <laughs> Can I? <laughs> Maybe we should leave him alone in here. <laughs> Hold on. I need a moment. <laughs> And if you would like to engage with us online, we are... You probably are, don't want to. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Please keep listening. <laughs> All right. If you, if you go to our Facebook page, we've got a general Facebook page, a public page, but we also have a listener group if you want to join that as well. And we will engage with you. We do enjoy meeting all of the folks who are finding uh, little bits that they're learning about this movie or wanting to share some of their experiences when they were first introduced to Gene Wilder and Young Frankenstein. You Until can then, sure tell it's Friday, can't you? It is Friday. I am so ready for the weekend. I'm ready to crack one open. Time to exit <laughs> So, all right. Well, Susan, thank you again so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Walt, till Monday. Till Monday. Frankenstein is in front for one. Frankenstein is also in Transylvania. They're both there. It's going to get crazy. And we'll both be back. Bye-bye.